Test the mic, check one, two, check one, two. Levels look good. Today's vlog is actually gonna be pretty awesome. We're meeting up with a special, special guest, Alex Stroll. Whew, that mountain there is epic. As I'm sure you've seen in the title, but we're gonna do a hike, gonna do some photo tips. I think Andrew Kearns might also come along. Long time no see. Like, yeah, right? Oh, oh like a... It's bunchy. coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. There it is. Starting out in my house this morning, and we're gonna go get Alex. Caledman. Yo. Howdy. What up, dude? The white beast. Yeah, the big white Land Cruiser. Big white. How's it going? Coffee first? Coffee first. First things first. All right, now we can officially get the day started. So apart from us going out and just hiking and shooting today, uh, what just came out today? Today's the day that the summer workshop becomes available to everybody. So I'm doing this from a car on a laptop. It's little piece of history here yeah yeah <laughs> first plug of the day if you only get to this far in the video before we actually get on the hike check out Alex's summer workshops you can buy it and it has a it? lot of tips in there a lot of filming all about the tips yeah. actionable advice the summer is my favorite part of the year because I do most of my shooting and I made a workshop so people can plan their summer better like research because everybody travels in the summer mostly so this is like a one-stop shop from like planning then to shooting and then like telling the story of a place it all flows together nicely. It yeah, <laughs> it's nice, good visual. So I will obviously link that into the description below. All right, let's go hike. <laughs> all right, so we got we are at here at Trailhead Lake 22. Um, my phone is about to be full of storage, so I'm going to switch over to the Canon camera now. By one of my friend's roommates, he has the R3. Yeah. I'm saying it's always a big debate. What do you put on top of your bag? What is the first thing you're gonna need, right? You mean like, so what goes in the bottom to the top? Yeah, like what do you put on top for easy access? So usually it's a sandwich. And usually then I have water, but then I have a camera. So what does the camera fall into all this? Mm. Camera, Okay. water, sandwich. Oh, that's and a then, good. And then a jacket, right? That's the last step, because when you take your jacket is when you've already stopped, yeah. so last. You got it, camera's first priority though. Come on, Dad. <laughs> Mahalo speed. I can't remember I said it today, but the trail we're doing is Lake 22. It's kind of a Washington classic. Done this many times. It never gets old. Well-maintained trail, so if you are in Seattle area, it's about an hour from the city. Great trail. Macron, some little water droplets on these leaves right here. Just trying to get those. There it is. Today I'm making a video with you guys in a moment actually <laughs> about something difficult. I shoot most of my photos between sunrise and sunset, and people often ask me, you know, that's cool, but what if you can't shoot at sunrise or sunset? Sometimes you just want to enjoy your day and you not know, rough it. And you, sometimes I go for a hike midday, like today. You know, I had a nice morning work in. Yeah, what time is it right now? Dude, what time is it? 1.30. Nice. Yeah, 1.30, full on midday, worst light usually. So in this video, I want to share with you my three most useful tips on how I shoot midday or just harsh light. Let's do it. Whoa, it's got a bit of flare. Works really well. Sick. It's crazy the difference. Yeah, it's so quick. Yeah. Shooting midday. First thing, when you're shooting midday, you want to pick the day you do it. That was a lot of days. But you want to pick the day because midday now is great. It's cloudy, the shadows are super soft. You can see there's not much shadows going on. But midday on a sunny day, a little more tricky. I like to start with a little check on the forecast. When I know I'm going to go out at a wrong time of the day, I use actually Wonderground. Uh, there's no service here, but Wonderground is my go-to weather app. You know it? Weather Underground? Wonderground? Wonderground. No, yeah. I haven't heard it. I'll really? check it out. Weather Sweet. Underground, yeah. More snow than we thought, Whoa. but pretty nice though, huh? Yes, you look at the fog up there. Yeah. So sick. Are you vlogging with the C1? Yeah, dude. It's so big, you should see this camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's either this or the phone. I go extremes. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Jump in. Wow. Do it. I mean, you can. Yeah. Like, like you guys know how to use DSLRs. Yeah. <laughs> so you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. He might. I don't know. He kind of knows what he's doing. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. One, two, three. Alex, what's your uh, what f stop for this? F stop? Yeah. Um, what's an F? F four. F four. F four? Yeah. I'm fitting F four for this. I never go past F four. No. No. Past it like any higher. Yeah. No F eight. Never. Cool. No, I like to have my foreground a little bit blurry. It makes the photo more human. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like when it's too, sh everything's too sharp. It's too clinical. Yeah. I don't like it as much. When I get to the spot, I want to first start the scouting. Um, and if I'm shooting landscape, like right here, I don't have to worry too much about where the light's coming because this it's really soft light. But if I'm shooting portraits of somebody, then it's going to really matter. Right now, in just a second, I can see the light's coming from just exactly right there. So props to Caleb actually for being no. in the right position. Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm shooting, so you just got to get there, get a lay of the land and look at where the light's coming. Is it harsh? Is it soft like right now? How are the shadows? So actually take some time to look around. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just yeah. take some time to look around. And um, also, if it's really sunny, look for shadows and go shoot inside the shadows if you're shooting portraits. You can find like some nice diffuser from the trees or just from a wall in the city. Wow. What will sell to the, the dads trying to buy? Actually, it'd be like this, like... Get... <laughs> Sponsor us. The best water in the state. Yeah. You were launching the drone spin? Yes, I am looking for a launch pad. Just out here hanging out and uh, droning it now. Wow, with so much exertion right now. These two two nerds out here in nature. A little nerd. Then we're gonna get some clips. Alex said I can even put in a couple in the vlog, so yeah. we'll insert those clips. I'll give them to you. Okay, somewhere in here. Don't know how far I can go past these mountains. Somewhere up, up there. Oh, it's there. What happened last time? Oh, well, you'll see it on the vlog. Oh, Andrew cut his I'll, finger I'll, off. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you the clip and you can put it in here. Alright. There was a bit of a problem with the landing last time. <laughs> yeah, grab it now, yep. Oh! Turn it off, turn it off! Oh! Oh! Hey. Oh, yeah! <laughs> there it is! So we just had lunch, hung out, flew the drone, uh, third tip time. Almost crashed the drone. No. We ran out of battery. <laughs> Kern's caught it though. Yeah, yeah good the, work. The redemption catch. Jeff had the extra battery too, so. Thanks, Jeff. Team, Jeff. team effort. Today is really overcast, but this applies to sunny conditions, cloudy, and when I'm shooting midday, I'm usually overexposing my photos. By a stop or two, it gives it this more airy vibe. And I feel like you're owning it more. It's very bright to your eyes, so I kind of replicate that on camera. On top of overexposing, I also shoot towards the sun always. I don't want to shoot with my back to the sun when it's very bright out. I feel like when I'm shooting with my back to the sun, everything looks like it's not defined. There's no sh contrast or any values. But when I'm shooting towards the sun, I feel like we have this harsh light coming and you gotta own it. And Shooting towards the sun just gives me better results in, in, in harsh light. Those mosquitoes. That's the thumbnail right there. That's the one. <laughs> 24 FPS. All right, cool. So we're just kind of wrapping up our time here out at Lake 22. Big thanks to Alex and Andrew Kearns for letting me tag along. 
me and Jeff actually tag along. It's fun to hang with them. If you liked like this video or in the tips Alex gave, I mean, he is such a good photographer, so well, well educated and just like experienced. Um, he just released his summer workshop series, which is like a way higher produced video series than this teaching you just a ton about shooting, uh, I think during the summer specifically. So I'll link that again below. I think I already said that, but um, yeah, he kills it with his workshops and uh, make sure you check him out. What are you getting? Check out Jeff's macro workshops too. Look at this. Guys, it's been a great hike. It's been a great hike. Great hike, Boom. great shoot, good tips. Three, two, one, tigers. Um, I, I, was, <laughs> I was just telling him about the summer workshop though. Yes. How much is it? It is 129. 129. There you go. But hang on, Moment's gonna have a preferential price. So if they sign up through this link in the video. Yep. All right. Wow. Great news. <laughs> or might you, maybe like the link. The link's gonna be discounted. Yep. For being a subscriber and watching our video. Yep. So uh, summers where I shoot most of my stuff. Like 80% of the photos I shoot in a year are in the summer. Okay. So I've done it. I've done like seven productive summers so far in a row, and I think I've worked out a method where it. I can share this with people, they can have a productive summer as well, and also fun. Yeah. So I've kind of deconstructed the process of planning the summer, so you kind of crush your photos. Cool. Research, and then shooting, shooting your friends, adding production value for cheap, just a bunch of things. Yeah. There you go, Alex has shot seven summers, he's putting in all the hard work, so he's gonna tell you tips to help you get the most out of it. Dude, so many tips. All right, we'll see you back at the car. We made it back alive. Box water still going strong. Yeah, it's almost finished. <laughs> I'm like fogging up the lens with my. Uh... Oh. So recap. Well, I think these tips we just went over serve you whether you're shooting mobile or shooting on a camera. It's the same thing. It's more like high level things. Like don't think about the camera too much and just look at the light, read it, and decide where you're going to position yourself. Check the forecast before you go. Um, and if it looks really sunny, I might just not go. Today looked perfect, like cloudy. So I check. My forecast on uh, Wonderground, there's no service here, but I'd show you otherwise. Number two is when you get to your location, take a step back and slow down and just look around. Yeah, where's the light coming? Is it harsh? Is it really soft? How the shadows are? Um, and decide what you're shooting. If you're shooting a landscape, you gotta position yourself. I like to be in front, shooting at the sun, and not, not with my back towards the sun. Number three is really simple. I just, when I'm shooting midday or in harsh light, I tend to overexpose my photos by a stop or two. Uh, it, I'm just trying to replicate what my eyes see. It feels really bright to my eyes, so I'm gonna replicate that in my photo. So I'm just like mirroring nature and overexposing my photo a bit to give it this airy feel, like very light and bright. There you go. That's it. Wait, one question. Do you overexpose your drone shots a little bit too? If it's bright out or? With the drone shots, I gotta be more careful because they don't have as much dynamic range. Um, but the drone shots, I tend to overexpose anyways a bit because the shadows are not easy to save on the drone, actually. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, you heard it here first. Uh, Kearns, any last words? Uh, yeah, check out the summer workshop. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna say. I got I you. you. Any last words, Alex? Uh, thank you for watching. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, it was so good to hike. Subscribe to both of their YouTube channels. Yes. Jeff, any last words? Oh, use moment lenses. Yeah, that's right. That Follow me on Instagram. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. He's the codesman. the codesman. Sweet. No, but yeah, check out Alex's workshop. Um, comment below if you have any questions about the tips. And hope you enjoyed watching me sweat and just ramble at the camera with Alex. <laughs> Thanks, dude. It's Legend. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. which is a little smaller, it's espresso in a bit of it.